Well, good evening. And, and over one shoulder tonight, our title's in English. Over the other, our title's in Irish. We kind of we kind of did this to try and signify how this this one issue has taken over. It's taken over a lot of the conversation, hasn't it? How do we find accommodation in this country over the Irish language? Jim Allister, how do we find compromise over Irish language? Well, of course, we were told that in the Belfast Agreement, everything was settled and life was going to be wonderful. Uh, and some people tell us we dare not change the Belfast Agreement. But of course, let's remember, the Belfast Agreement actually dealt with the Irish language issue. It set up a cross-border body with full executive powers. It anticipated an Irish language strategy. There was not a single mention in the Belfast Agreement of an Irish language act. And things but, changed. But, no. And clearly people who oh. hold Irish dear to their hearts felt that their rights were not being protected, Jim. Oh, sorry, Stephen. And they wanted more. You have said to me, when I say we must get rid of mandatory coalition, we can't. It's agreed in the Belfast Agreement. It's what the people voted for. Well, when we come to the Irish language, there was no proposition for an Irish language act in the Belfast Agreement. But what we have, of course, still not... is ever the Republican movement pocketing what they can get and then moving on to get more in their culture war against this part of the United Kingdom. And that's what this is all about. So either you said the, in my either show last week it would, You said in my show last week an Irish language act would hollow out the yes. entire sense of Britishness. Yes. Come on. Of course it would. And that is the design of it. It hollows it out when you take the public service where to get a job in it, there will be preferment for those who can speak Irish. Arlene and Foster said there would be no quotas. Well, isn't that why she's pulled the plug? But that's what the Irish language lobby is demanding. That's what the Sinn Féin proposal contains. Well, we don't know what was in it. Well, we do know what was in Carol McWilliams' Act draft bill in 2015. Which we was voted down. Which we, was we voted down that. at the executive. That's still their proposals. It's a straw man, Jim. It's still and their you proposals. Know it. And, and Sinn Féin have yet to recant from that. Okay. It was their proposal. That, that was never so going to see the, the light of day. Hold on. Hold on. Well, you asked Naomi. Question. Never yes. going to see the light of day. Naomi. That was never going to see the light of day. You know that and I know that. Because when it came before the executive back in 2016, Carl McKillen brought the bill and we voted against it. Not because we oppose an Irish Language Act, but because her version of the Irish Language Act was creating all sorts of but responsibilities we, and demands of public service that there was no money for. It demand. may be what but people Naomi, are asking for. It was not what was on the table We don't this need week. to go back then, do we? What we need well, to Jim do... Jim just did. So yes, I but, think it's important, well, actually, that we answer never these Never mind points. what Jim just did. It is these straw men that have led us to where we are today. So here's what I want to know. We don't have prospects now you, to get institutions you up You are the running. leader of a political party in Northern Ireland. Correct. Do you know what was in this accommodation? I do now. I didn't earlier today, but I do now, yes. And they haven't told us. So they're not telling the citizens of Northern Ireland Tell in one of, of the biggest moments in Northern Ireland over recent years, both Sinn Féin and the DUP, who seek the, the, the trust of the people of Northern Ireland, you keep them in the dark. Well, do you know what? I'm fighting for them to know. That's what I'm doing, whether you like it or not. Why wouldn't you tell them? And then Arlene Foster, you cannot possibly say, can you, that you keep negotiations secret because you then came out yesterday and you told people what wasn't in it. Not what was in it, what wasn't in it. So it's now a guessing game. Well, it seems Naomi Hold can on. tell us. What's Let in Naomi it? You say, you say you know what's <coughs> in it. Well, I'm I... presenting this show, not you. I'm helping you. <laughs> With all due respect, Stephen, um, I have one rule in politics, and that is that I observe confidences. Uh, I am happy to talk about my position. So you're not going to tell I us am, what's in it I either. I am happy to talk about my party's position. But what I am not happy to do is pass around gossip about what well, we heard today. It's not gossip. You say you know what's in it. Well, that's what we were told what was in it today. We were told, told what was in it Told by a credible source. By a credible source. Within the DUP? By a credible source. But I am not here to spread gossip. If, if the DUP and Sinn Féin want to come and tell people what was in their deal, because it was their deal, we weren't at the table, 
If they want to come and tell people what was in their deal, I would encourage them to do it because I believe in transparency. That's why we published... <laughs> you do, but you Jim, won't tell us. please, have some manners. <laughs> I, have some consistency. No, have you some can't manners. You transparency. Of course and then I do. Well, I, the very thing I, you tell I us. published my own party's proposals for the Irish what language. Your proposals that matter. But actually, it was our proposals that were the basis of the deal that was being brought forward. So our proposals did matter, Jim. So that includes a freestanding no, Irish language. Oh, freestanding, not freestanding. The issue is substance, Jim. Yes. Something which you apparently know no, nothing about. I, okay. Because well, all you want you to do is me. stoke. By the fires, me what's in it? Stoke the fires and create more tension okay. in society. And you want but to hide it. Okay, hold on. Let's get to the important hide. stuff. The hold important on. This stuff is important here tonight. Is not the Irish language. The important stuff is that our institutions at Stormont are on their knees. The important thing is that our young people are losing hope for this society. You may sit there and grin at your Perrick victory today, Jim, because you've seen the talks collapse, but you have done a damage to the institutions and to Northern Ireland itself today. Sorry. And you, along with others, need to take Sorry. responsibility for your actions as well as everything well, else. Before you get carried away in your anger, Let's face, let's face the reality that it was the construction of these institutions that brought about their well, own... Well, we weren't going back. brought about their own destruction. I think because they talk. created the politics of ransom. Because you couldn't have a government without Sinn Féin, you couldn't have a government without the DUP, so you set up the politics of ransom, well, perhaps which Sinn Féin exercised... Well, perhaps if you were power willingly, Jim, with well, sorry, anybody, there is even no opportunity other unionists. To share power willingly. You can't I even agree with agree other unionists. I haven't. You're a happily party agree one. to assist Hold on. You're a party Hold on. Of one. We are not going to... We're not, not going to... We're not going to share... I haven't seen you. You are a party of one, Jim. Naomi. A party of one. Attracting a lot of your attention. You cannot even... You cannot even agree with other unionists. Naomi. Anyone who is in denial that the only way forward in this society is power sharing between people in yeah, Northern it's Ireland really are well, utterly deluded, the, all right, stop, Jim. Stop, stop, stop. Utterly deluded. Naomi, stop. The has been an utter failure. Stop. Naomi, I haven't seen you this angry no. in, in quite a long time. No. Why? Because I see 20 years of work and investment in the political institutions in Northern Ireland destroyed. And I see it destroyed over a straw man of what the Irish language will do to unionism. Unionism is doing nothing but destroying itself by getting caught on this hook. You have to reach accommodation. If Northern Ireland is to exist, you've got to be prepared to work with others. And Jim, you can't so while work you with won't, anyone. Well, hold on, we're not talking about Jim. So, so from what you from what you believe is in the act, you feel that what Sinn Féin was proposing was reasonable, do you? No, I don't. And that's why it wouldn't have been the act. It wasn't Sinn Féin's act or the DUP's non-act. It was a compromise. Everything in Northern Ireland that is ever going to work here will be a compromise. And until we stop well, I, I trying to take and so we yeah. stop, stop trying to take these absolutist attitudes. I think We're though, not going to see progress. I think though, are Both the, parties had to the, give way on but, this. But, but, you, but you say that. But are the people of Northern Ireland, and we'll look at what Sinn Féin promised in a moment or two, but look, when a, prom when a politician stands up and on multiple occasions makes a public promise yes. to people, then maybe some unionists, that's why some of them are angry. Now, let's just, because I, I, I want to let you see this. This was not about, and notice this in this, this was not about standalone Irish Language Act or freestanding Irish Language Acts. Have a look at the public promises that were made by the DUP about Irish language, full stop. Watch this. If we have an Irish Language Act, maybe we should have a Polish Language Act as well, because there are more people in Northern Ireland that speak Polish and speak Irish. We'll say it slowly so that you understand, Katrina and Jerry. We will never agree to your Irish Language Act. We have no red lines. We are not the barrier to devolution coming back uh, to the people of Northern Ireland. I mean, the reason I'm against an Irish Language Act, I think it is important to talk about this, uh, is because of the cost of it, first of all. We also agree to bring forward legislation to address culture and language issues in Northern Ireland. Are you serious? Do you think that the DUP should implement an Irish Language Act? Is a, is a, a, some sort of a magnanimous step for We will never uh, say to an Irish 
you feed a crocodile, they're going to keep coming back and looking for more. The paper that your wish list is written on, well, we'll just regard it as toilet paper. I mean, this characterization of we should have given something uh, to Sinn Féin uh, to keep them appeased is not the way I do business. Freestanding wasn't mentioned. Standalone wasn't mentioned, which is why I wonder if the people of Northern Ireland are entitled to know what the DUP agreed with Sinn Féin, what that skeleton proposal was. Let's go into the audience. We'll come back to the table in a moment or two. Yes, sir, go ahead. Stephen, I've sat on this studio before with you about the Northern Ireland executive, and I think they're an absolute disgrace. They're letting the people of this country down. They're letting the health service down. They're letting the education sector down. And I never thought I would sit here and say this, but I would be in favour of direct rule. Cut them off completely. I've had enough. I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only person. You do know that direct rule, then, is some English minister not accountable to you, flying over here, doesn't live here, doesn't have the feel for Northern Ireland, the, the experience, the hinterland of Northern Ireland. So what's the Northern Ireland politicians doing for me then? What are they doing for everybody in this audience? Nothing. They're sitting there in a room, negotiating, not telling us the terms that they have not agreed to or agreed to. What am I paying my taxes for, for them to not represent me? I'm not being represented in this country. And nobody here is. Do you think We've no a, executive. Do you think a disagreement over Irish language is so important? Well, whether you mean... like it or not, this is Northern Ireland. And we all have different cultures, and I think it's something that we <clears throat> should embrace. Irish language, uh, Orange Order, 12th of July, these are parts of our culture, whether you like it or not. And I think it all should be embraced, but it's not. The people who have the real power in Northern Ireland are the DUP. If you look at Brexit, and you look at the agreements um, uh, arranged between the Irish and British governments. It was the DUP that said, no, we're not doing that. So is the people here being fully represented? And especially Brexit. This is one of the biggest political issues that is facing this country in a long, long time. And we're not being represented. It's ministers in England that's making the decisions. So, you know, where is the Sinn Féin? Where is Sinn Féin? Where is the DUP? Well, I can tell you Why now... Why are they not coming here? And <coughs> I've had this conversation... Well, I, I, I can tell you now, the DUP, Sinn Féin and the SDLP, they just won't come yeah. and speak to you in this show. And that's not the first time you've said that to me, Stephen. They just you won't know come. that. You know, I've sat but, here but listen, and we've here's had this the deal, conversation. Mate. Here's the deal. You see while you all continue to come, that's fair, that's fair enough for me. All right? That's fair enough. They don't want to come, no problem. You can all speak to them. That's fair enough, and I would love to speak to them. But you are not, speaking to them. They're not Let answering. me tell you, every one of them are watching. They're not answering to us. They're, they're not watching. Answering. Of course they're watching. They, they wouldn't miss watching. it. But I can't get an answer. You know, I am a taxpayer, and I am working my backside off to pay my bills. You know, paying taxes, paying their way. They're getting full pay. Well, that's another question. It's an absolute, and it's, it's another issue. It's I've another question for the about. Secretary of State. And I am disgusted. She's had the review. The review... <laughs> Has, has suggested that the MLA pay should be cut by, what is it, 30%? Yep. Is she going to do it? No, it should be cut completely. Sorry. They're, they're not... They're, you know, why cut it by 30%? You know, Stephen... Stephen you know, you're sitting there tonight, OK? What if you didn't turn up? Would you get paid? If you didn't turn up? Tonight, because you didn't agree. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think if I got a clause in my contract that I would, you know, but no. If, it was if a I didn't turn up to work, you know, if I didn't turn up to work, I wouldn't get paid, and I would be disciplined for it. If I didn't fulfil my my obligations and my terms and conditions of my contract, I would be disciplined. Listen, I would stop getting paid. Listen, you know, thank you. you. I Jim Allister sitting you're there. The, you're the boss. I mean, you know. Well, how am I the boss? Nobody's because listening. You're the voters. We're we're accounted. We're accountable to you. you we're know. elected by you. And I understand <clears throat> your frustration because I feel it with every fibre of my being sitting here but, tonight. But at the end of the day, if people keep electing the same parties, 
we are going to get the but same thing. But you're not thing. going to change that, Naomi. You're, well, you're, you're, unfortunately, people, you're not. If and people, people aren't think, going to change that, then there is no point for rating the people that you get. But there are still those people who are voting green and orange. Because and that's where we're at. It is something <coughs> okay. that I'm fed up with. Listen, it's, thank, it's a disgrace. Thank those you very much. Are, it's, it's, it's just because I grew up and I was there when the Good Friday Agreement was signed and it was a great thing. But we're back to square one. Yeah. Nobody takes this province seriously because of our politics, because it's still green and orange, it's still childish, and we're sitting here because of... But that's surely, that's surely, and, and Nelson, I, I know you're probably not going to get drawn into this, but that's surely why it would be good for every citizen in this country to see how close they got, so that we can all look at it and think, well, OK, so this is, this is how we would need to find more compromise. But the fact that it's being hidden from the public of Northern Ireland leaves this question, are we ever going to be able to square this circle on Irish language? I think your question actually includes in it almost the answer. Because so often the debate and the discussion about cultural issues in Northern Ireland ends up being framed around and built around the demands for an Irish Language Act. That becomes the dominant thing and everyone else is expected to fit in around that. I think actually that has been unfortunate. It's been the position for many years. If you go back, I know you didn't want a history lesson, but if you go back as far as the Anglo-Irish Agreement, it contained commitments about culture. They were never implemented fairly. They were implemented in a discriminatory way. And what we've seen over the years is a preferential treatment being built up for Irish again and again and again, and other cultural expressions, whether they be British, Ulster, Orange, Ulster, Scots, whatever they are, all other cultural traditions are made to be subservient and secondary to that. You saw that mention was made earlier of the Belfast Agreement. That contained eight solid commitments for the Irish language. When you looked at other aspects of culture, not one. Now, an 8 nil result is not very good in the case of you're trying to get um, a shared and okay. better North Ireland. Fergal? Well, I wanted to come back first to you on what Jim was saying earlier on, the contextual of the Good Friday Agreement. When I was a kid, I went to a school called Moscow First Year. It was the first Irish language primary school in the history of this state. For seven years, the school wasn't funded because of discrimination. Now, by the time the Good Friday Agreement was signed in 1998, the decision had been made to view the Irish language, let me make a point, as a litmus test for the new peace process. Now, the reason why the Irish language became an issue in St Andrews more than 10 years after that was because the Irish language school community had travelled in says. But let's now, talk about now. now. We think, like, okay, we'll now. talk about now. In 2024, the 6,000 young people who attend Irish medium schools will have doubled. 12,000 young people. I have a child who's four and a child who's, who's two. And you're getting your are own they, sector and you can form a school with 12 pupils. You can't do that in the English-speaking sector, the, be it maintained or controlled. So you're getting lavish generosity right. that no one else is getting. This is the key and point. it's never enough. This is the key point. Why is the Council of Europe, why is the UN, the linguistic experts supporting the demand for an well, Irish language why act. Don't this, is, point. this is why, because they want to bring this state no, why in the lane, in the lane of the 21st century. That's what they're trying to do, because we still are the backwoods men of Europe. Jim's, Jim's point in relation to the Irish language: the Irish language, from the foundation of this state, has been marginalised, has no, been discriminated. No, in terms and why of we need, why, why we need an Irish language act? Why we need an Irish language act in the present? Is the correct? It's to correct that historical legacy. Put this in context. We're it's talking not about the historical legacy. Think about is it? Okay, it's okay. about what you have now, surely. Okay. Now, Can is it worth not a government not being restored? What do you want in this act? Think about this. The Irish language community, like myself and others, are taxpayers. We deserve to be included, treated with tolerance and respect, You're the same as everybody else. million a year for your own education else. system. It's a pittance, Jim. It's a pittance. You've put, got a guilt to quarter. Put this in context. You've got a north-south body with executive bodies. A guilt to quarter. You've got more than funded, anyone, any other sector has. Oh, it has been and you still has want tens funded. of millions spelt on Irish when we can't fix our potholes in this country. Why is it either or? It's time we got our priorities right. Why is it either or? Why is it either or? Oh, you just think money falls from heaven. Why is it either or? Think about this. See, it's this give, give. Why is it okay? Attitude. Why is it that, okay? That you just take. Why is it okay? And everyone else Why is it okay something? for Irish speakers to be the anomaly in the UK? Why is it okay for Welsh speakers to have language rights? Well, do you know how much Scots the, Welsh, Welsh speakers to have? the Welsh language yes, act is yes, costing? Yes, I heard all that. Yesterday, the I heard the girl said explain it to you. Tens of detail. millions of pounds per year. And do you think that we should spend tens of millions of pounds a year what price when we've got education 
uh, on its knees, with hospitals on their knees, potholes everywhere, and you think the priority is tens of and millions. The it's not the and the collapsing right. of the executive and the collapsing of the executive and the failure to continue with the talks will cost many more tens of millions of pounds and do much more. Save quite a few tens of much millions. More, and the much squander. more and do much more damage okay. to Steve, our health all right. service, okay. our more education point, Stephen, system, loads of time. our infrastructure and everything okay. else because the people who were elected to make real reform and real change will not be there. The government will do a, a maintenance approach, a current maintenance I'm, approach, and we will not get the kind of root and branch reform that we need okay. I'm also, in our public I, services. I am also wondering, by the way, I, I, you know, I, I know that I challenge... That's the despair. I know I challenge the, 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 the TUP on you know, the biggest secret in the country now... Arlene, what's in the accommodation? But then Sinn Féin, when they describe this as an accommodation, where did Sinn Féin give ground on? What did, where, what did they move on? Because if we listen to what Michelle O'Neill said, well, in fact, let's do it together. Look at this. We needed to see an Irish Language Act. We needed to see marriage rights. We needed to see uh, legacy inquest rights. All the issues which are available, rights that are affordable. This is very reasonable what we're asking for. It's rights for all citizens. It's good government. It's equality. It's respect. It's integrity in government. That's what we set out to achieve. That's what, that's what we believe we had an accommodation on, on the whole range of all of those issues. And the DUP leadership have failed to close on that accommodation. Detail, Michelle. Come on. Detail. What did you set out to achieve? Let's come into the audience here, sir. You want to speak? Go ahead. Very, 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 front, very front row, second in the front row. Let's get a microphone. Go ahead. Stephen, how are you doing? This whole uh, thing is a sham. It's a merry-go-round which keeps on going round and round and round. From 1998, we've had four agreements. How many more agreements are we going to have that's going to fail? The so Irish what's the answer? Well, the, well, I'm going to give you the answer. That has to be postponed. I cannot in its entirety go forward because the difference and the divide amongst the people here in this country is a shambles. We have people down in hospitals and we can't look after our own people. We have schools, educations, everything. We have the worst winter and we still are sitting here and we're arguing about this. Yeah. I've asked to come on your show a couple of times. I represent the Northern Ireland Crown Forces Veterans for Justice and I've watched this show and I've spoken to Naomi Long and I'm in the process of speaking with the DUP with uh, my colleague here in recent times. We have been forgotten about. The Crown Forces Veterans for Justice right across Northern Ireland on any show that you have had have never been represented. And you can talk about Sinn Féin IRA, you can talk about the paramilitaries, you can talk about everybody oh, right across the Sinn board. Sinn Féin will point out they're a political but, party with a mandate. Yep. But we don't need a mandate. <clears throat> what we need is representation. We have lost people here throughout the Troubles. And I we're still lost in people <coughs> who are committing suicide. And we have no reset centres. We have nothing. Well, listen, and I, I promise you, we can talk about it on the radio show. Where there, where, but I where, think, where Stephen, there is with all room. due respect, I you know, you. I would like to give us our own show in 40 minutes and bring the representatives and see how we feel and speak to our people, children, sons, daughters, murdered, who were well, let's sent, talk about doing that. who were set let's here, talk. yes, who were okay. sent here. Let's talk. All right, who were set here. I need, I need to keep it on the subject tonight. Yes. Thank you. Let's go up to here, the guy here with the beard and the glasses. Go ahead, sir. Stephen, if you think this is anything to do with an Irish language act, nobody in this country believes that. Sinn Féin walked out the executive a year ago over RHI. Then all of a sudden it was, oh, my community's right to get married. And now it's an Irish language act. The two parties well, actually, can't agree with it's each all other. It, are they? Sorry? They're saying it's all of those. But why are they suddenly coming out with all these reasons when the country's falling apart? Because they're not Are these not things that can be worked on? Work. Are these not things that can be worked on together to as work. an actual government? instead of using them as a yardstick to beat <coughs> the other side. It's but ridiculous. The civil service is in its knees. There's no budget. How can this country possibly continue when it's them and us? You have one problem. The problem is that for, for the more and more of you who say that, and it's not for me to say whether it's right and wrong, when it comes for an election, you put those parties there. You give them a mandate. You say to them, this is how we want you to behave, because we're bringing you back to do it again. Well, I'm sorry, Stephen, but I actually voted Alliance because I agree with you completely. I've had enough You're of the big You're not agreeing with me. I haven't said which way you should vote. 
<laughs> I'm quite happy to tell you. Because enough's enough for this country. There's another generation coming up. Are we really going to hand on to the next generation the same problems that the generations before us have went through, the generations, the current generations maybe, have went through? Yes, maybe we are. Some you have a Secretary of State that change. won't call an election. You have a Secretary of State that won't cut their pay. You have a Secretary of State that won't give deadlines. You have the DUP that won't tell you what the accommodation was. You have Sinn Féin that won't tell you what the DUP allegedly walked away from. Then it has to be direct wrong. Enough's enough. Let's, uh, let, let's speak to the legal expert, Joshua uh, Rosenberg, uh, tonight. Uh, J Joshua, 13 months ago, uh, what, what, what the law says, my understanding, is that there must be an election called within a reasonable period. So what does that mean? It means whatever the lawyers want it to mean. Uh, that was put out by the Northern Ireland Assembly in uh, March last year, 11 months ago. And what they said was that if there wasn't a deal, if the main parties can't agree to form an executive by the 27th of March, the law says that the Secretary of State has to call another election within a reasonable period of time. Now, obviously, uh, the then Secretary of State, the current Secretary of State, has not wanted to do that, and nobody's challenged it. I think all you can say about reasonable is the longer it goes on, the less reasonable it becomes. So, so who's going to call it? Who's going to decide? Could we be here this time next year in limbo? Well, we could be. I mean, if you look at what Mr Brokenshire, the former Secretary of State, said uh, quite some time ago, uh, he said in April of last year uh, that unless an executive was formed by May of last year, uh, then it's likely to mean, however undesirable, either a second election or a return to decision-making from Westminster. So are we looking at an election? Well, again, look at what the Secretary of State, Karen Bradley, said today. She said other challenging decisions will have to be taken by the UK government. She didn't say today what they were, but if you look at what she said last month in January, she said that without rapid progress, the UK government will face significant decisions. These include setting a budget for 2018-19, the future of MLA pay, the prospect of a further election, which she said she continued to keep under review, and ultimately, and this is the threat, other arrangements to ensure that Northern Ireland is able to so, benefit from good government. So what In do other you words, think is going to happen, rule. Joshua? I think that the uh, Secretary of State is going to hope that the parties can come to a deal. She's not going to rush into things. She's going to wait. She's going to put pressure on. She's going to hope that the programmes talks are like over. yours... The well, talks are over. They're never over till they're over, are they? But if they really are over, then she has that choice. Either she calls another election a year after your last election in Northern Ireland, or she has formal you, direct rule from London. Joshua, thank you very much. You know what, Naomi? I, I will get more radio programmes over this and, and we will get more TV shows and all of that. I'm very mindful tonight because I hear from them uh, of people who are in serious pain because they're on a waiting list yep. for, for our hospitals. And who knows whether devolution, by the way, will even solve that. Don't start me on that. But they have nobody to go to now and say, I'm holding you accountable. And how long is this going to go on for? Well, I mean, we were very clear last year in June that we thought that that should have been an actual deadline. Um, and that if parties weren't willing to meet their responsibilities at that point, then it was time for the Secretary of State to take more decisive action. That didn't happen. It didn't happen again at Christmas, and again, it didn't happen in the new year. We were promised there would be a reboot of the process. We were told that it would be a different process, and we went back to the same old, same old of two parties locking themselves in a room, talking past each other, uh, and complete failure. And the truth is, Stephen, that, yes, you're right. I, I, my constituents are suffering because of this. The young people growing up in my constituency will be looking tonight in despair and thinking, what is the point of staying in Northern Ireland? We would be better packing our bags and going off and making a life somewhere else. I hope my generation would be the last generation thinking like that. And so tonight I am angry and I am frustrated and I am sickened by the fact that what we're seeing is well over 20 years of investment in a process that offered so much opportunity being squandered. Can this be pulled back the from the brink? The pit. Can it be put? The, well, I think the brink is. We're over the brink. The question now is, can we salvage anything from the wreckage? Yes, but, but Naomi, we're over the brink. Naomi, There's the no question this, about and that. It's no help to your constituents or to mine to know in your heart that this system is broken, it's unfixable, 
How many times does that happen? Are you have trying to, to fix it, though, it or are you rejoicing no, that it's I'm broken? I'm trying to are get a system that would work. Uh, I'm certainly against Jim, getting a load of well, sticky plaster Jim, and I putting agree. together that which will never work. We will only get a coalition well, sometimes, that works Jim, if it's a coalition Jim, of Sometimes, the Jim, a wound heals if you leave a sticking plaster on it. And or at least stop the poking it. Sorry. And pick this and pick system, and pick this until system, it gets bigger and bigger. This Jim, system, whether you like to admit it or not, this system guarantees failure. Jim. Because it rewards... The, those who hold the country okay. to ransom. Jim. Until okay. you I want get a situation oh, well, where you can me, form a government... Okay, we'll say, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. I want to go in the audience stability. again. Go ahead, sir. You've had your hand up for a long time. Stephen, uh, I think uh, the country needs to get back to uh, getting governed from across the water as soon as possible. Sure. In fact, as a matter of urgency, we all know how bad the situation is here, uh, the way the health service is on its knees and everything else. There's bickering going yeah, on. Yeah, because Minister the, Peter Winklebottom will care about you, won't the, he? The, the From bickering, Dorset. The, the, the bickering that's going on in Stormont about an Irish language act or homosexual marriage or whatever, our representatives need to be able to go to the Houses of Parliament in London and fight for the £13 billion, pounds, which is the international aid budget annually. Now, there's £13 billion pounds that goes out to people like Ethiopia, for instance. Next time you're at Dublin Airport, you see the Ethiopian Airlines okay. Dreamliner going away. Okay. So, obviously, the government in Ethiopia Thank isn't you. too concerned about Thank it. They're you. using our money to We're not talking about the government in Ethiopia tonight. We're talking about the yes, lack of government in Northern here. Ireland. Go in yes, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm 21 years of age, and I'm supposed to be the future of this generation. And our leaders are arguing over a, an Irish Language Act. What, what, what does that bring for me for this future? If, if our government are ar arguing over the Irish language, uh, there's all this money that people are losing out in budget cuts and everything else, and what, what are we meant to do? Well, let's have a look, because there are, of course, signs that are um, in all three languages. Where's this? In, uh, in uh, Derry Leisure Centre, wasn't it? That there are some signs. Look at this. So there, there's... Uh, for Faryate is in Ulster Scots. Uh, there it is in, in Irish and uh, in English. I think we can see another one uh, in the leisure centre. Swimming pool, Lean Sanmara, Swimming. How do you pronounce that, Nelson? <laughs> I'm not laughing at it, I won't pronounce it properly. I think the word is quite clearly pool. Swimming pool. And then in the Guild Hall, if we move on. But this is, hold on a minute, you're all laughing. This, this, is, part of what, this is part of what is stopping the government. Yeah, being no. restored in Northern Ireland. No, it's not that simple. It's not that simple. Well, actually, signs have, have been talked it's, about it's, a lot. Yeah, and, and, and again, it's, it's a right straw right. man. I mean, it's a, that's a decision for councils. Street, sign, street signage, decision for councils, already dealt street with by signs. councils. Conor and Gaelica were on the Nolan Conor radio show Gaelica last Friday. Conor and say what they like, and they said, but I'm telling you now, Belfast well, City Council makes the decisions well, about street Conor signs in Belfast. Conor and said to me, Conor and Gaelica said to me on the, the Nolan radio show that they were demanding, as part of the, this, this future agreement, every single street sign in Northern Ireland to be an Irish. In fact, I, 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 I think I've, we've got the clip. Let's just confirm this. Plet. What you're demanding is Irish language street signs phased into every street sign in this country. Yes, we are, Stephen. I think it would need to do that because otherwise, you know, the counter-criticism for only having signage in some places is that it's ghettoisation. Janet, ghettoisation of every street sign isn't in Irish? Well, how do you choose, Stephen, where a sign is going to be? I mean, I think that that's, this is an enormously difficult it's issue. It's not consent, signage. then. It's just every sign. It depends on what kind of signage you're talking about. Street signs. Up the Shankill, Battenberg well, Street. Well, Naomi put, says... Put it in the Irish. <laughs> Woodville Road in Irish. I'm not sure that Battenberg is English anyway. Irish. Yeah. Yeah. 85% of the same they're Irish. But I think that, you know, we need to get away from, from this kind of very oppositional discussion, I think. There are two key issues here. The Irish language has been at the centre of uh, an ongoing issue, an ongoing problem, an enormous problem about evolving an equal society emerging out of conflict here. It's enormously difficult. But equal doesn't it's mean everything the same, issue. does it? 
The other thing that we need to look at is the Irish language and what it can bring to this society. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Jimmy Bryson, you've been accused of being the type of person that, that winds it up in Northern Ireland, that creates tension over something like this and then gloats when people can't find agreement to get on with their lives. Well, today is a good day for unionism, in my view. Well, and a good day well, that there's well, no devolved government. Listen, listen, see, for unionism, when you see Naomi Long is wound up as she is, it's obviously a good day for unionism. The system of, gov the system of government cannot work. The 98 Act cannot work. So the next logical step for unionism is we go to the Act rule and the unionist MPs use your influence at Westminster and let's try and amend or outright actually the appeal of the 1998 Act and let's deal with a little bit of reality. It is never going to work. It will not work. It can't work. Well, maybe the politicians in this scene. country can prove on, I, an unelected well, person like you well, wrong. Well, 2012... Maybe they can just prove someone like you that can't get two, votes well, wrong. 2012... 20 years, right. Stop yes, sticking up for you. 20, 20, 20 years. Hold on, Stephen. 2012, I said in your show, it's time for the act rule. Eventually, the day will come when unionism has had enough of concessions. Peter Robinson actually came out after that. You do have... Politically you do... I know that you... DUP hold on a minute. I know that you speak to people within the DUP. I know that. What did they tell you happened here? Well, look, I, I'm not going to get into that, but what I will say is I told you on your show on Monday morning what the outline of the deal uh, was going to be. I, I, I told you that on the radio when I told you that the DUP negotiating team were going to get a flea in there and they were going to be told... Uh, to, to, ..to think again. And, well... They've been told to think again, but the grassroots unionist community uh, has told the DUP to think again. No way. You see, the difficulty is that actually there's a, there's a grain of truth in what both Jim um, and Jamie are saying, in that the institutions from 1998 will never work while you have that attitude towards them, while you're unwilling to countenance compromise, whilst you're unwilling to accommodate people who see life differently from you. And for them. as long as people, for as long as people um, continue down this track of saying that something for you is something from me, that we can't have any shared gains in this society, then we will not okay. move on. And the reality is, if Jim wants a voluntary coalition, that's what Jim's saying, would work. Who would you go into coalition with, Jim? Okay. Well, let me you that. don't agree with the DUP. You don't agree with the Ulster Unionists. You don't agree with the Lions. You don't agree with Sinn Féin. You don't agree with the SDLP. You're a coalition of one. No, my system would be very simple. My system would be very simple. You have an election. Those who are elected are elected. Those, whoever they are, who can agree a programme for government on health, education, roads, whatever, and can command the necessary majority, which probably on their budget and programme of government should be 60% to make sure it's cross-community, they form the government. To make sure so it's cross-community. So it's so a mandatory do. coalition. No, it's not mandatory. It is mandatory. Not, it is mandatory. I'm sorry you I've can't I've said this get, to you for years. No, I'm sorry this hasn't gone through. When you say it, to ensure cross-community, I'm bouncing now, that is mandatory it is coalition. Not it's Go delusional. Go and read the 98 Act. That is to it ensure is reality delusional. Is you would have... You would have real inter-party negotiations, yes. of which the product would be, let's see who can agree to form a government. The current coalition isn't mandatory this system, either. This system where okay. you each don't party have to go has into a government. veto on the forming no, of government. No, hold on, this is important. You could important. get those think, who could form a government. Think, Stephen, this is really crucial. Majority, crucial. They govern. Okay. Okay. Crucial. Quickly. Simple. The current system is not mandatory. No it party is. has to... Jim. You can't have a government without them. Shh. It's mandatory. Sure. The only thing that is mandatory is the Office of First and Deputy First Minister. Yes. Beyond that, you can't have a government beyond like that. that, all parties okay. have to agree Nelson. to win. However, if you say it has to be cross community, are you seriously deluded enough to think that the SDLP would walk away and go into government with the DUP and the Ulster Unionists and Alliance and leave Sinn Féin outside okay. permanently? Okay. Or the Ulster Nelson. Unionists would walk okay. away from the DUP okay. and go into Nelson national politics? Nelson McCausland. Catch yourself off. Oh, Nelson McCausland. What's the, what's the, the way forward here? What's the way forward? Well, you're hardly in a position what to can reach we do political, as a, political success. What can we do as a... <laughs> um, 
What happened in the Westminster election Stop. in East Belfast? It Stop. really doesn't matter. At least I've been there, Jim. Okay. Right. I think that I've represented Northern Ireland in an international parliament. Oh, well, oh, is this what we're going to do now? Just well, compete with our mandates? Like want to be. I mean, let's, let's get serious, Jim. This is a dire this. evening this evening. It a is. dire evening And you should face Northern the fact Ireland. it's a dire evening because uh, this system will never work. And we are Instead okay. of trying to patch it I together would like again, Nelson McCausland to be able to speak tonight. We have an astronaut waiting on us. The more time you lot uh, disagree, we're eating into an astronaut's time, OK? Nelson McCausland. The big obstacle um, has been around uh, the issue of an Irish Language Act. And how do you resolve that issue around culture? And I think that there is a way of addressing cultural issues in Northern Ireland. You can look at good relations, you can look at good practice, you can take advice from a whole range of se sectors, particularly academic in Northern Ireland. I think that there is work that could be done on that. But whilst we have this incessant demand for a special treatment for one language and one cultural tradition over all others, then it doesn't go anywhere. So I'm interested... Sorry, right, hold yeah, on. Yeah, very quickly. It is, it is very, very quickly. Yeah, very quickly. So the just rocket just has started sorry, very quickly. Just, just if you actually look at... Uh, Janet Muller's there from uh, Pubble, a uh, friend here from, from Conrad and the Gilligan. Could I ask the question, how much would be, what would be the cost, Janet, of the, the sort of act Why that you were proposing? We don't know, we can't do this. Well, Why does that matter? Can't. Because okay. Janet wasn't in the negotiation. It, it matters, it matters, 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 matters right. because it matters, matters without what money. What matters is what That's Sinn Féin, what matters, what matters all right. is what think, was in front think, of Sinn Féin and the DUP, which my, would have moved a long think, way okay. from the demand Thank you very much, thank you, thank you.